My name is Amy Duchal, and I, I'm going to, I guess, take us, I guess, back to um, this research idea that we were talking about a little bit um, earlier today. I'm from C4. I'm a scientist at C4. I am coordinating a part of our global comparative study on red in um, six countries, Brazil, Peru, Cameroon, uh, Tanzania, Vietnam, Indonesia, and, and um, working with lots and lots of, of young people on this. And, you know, I think as we heard from the earlier conversation, climate change needs a new kind of scientist. Um, it, it can't be a scientist who's working for 30 years in their technical aspect and then discovers that their science actually has a potential policy impact. Um, we need scientists who can think about biophysical science, who can think about social science, who can think about integrating those things, who can work across scales. I'm a forester. I need to understand agriculture. Um, I need to understand the political economy of red, um, which is not something that I was trained to do. Um, I need to be able to actually engage civil society in my research. I need to make it interesting. I need to understand how my science links to the policy um, environment. And you know, most of our academic training doesn't prepare us for that. We, we do not have the skills to, to, to take on this absolutely huge challenge that we actually have to take on as researchers. And I think this is why the young researcher is the key to this, because the sooner that young scientists can get those kinds of skills and think in those kinds of integrated ways, actually, that's how we change um, what, what we currently see as these limitations. You know, someone saying, scientists are not good communicators. Does it really have to be that way? I mean, can we not get skills earlier on that scientists don't have to be bad communicators? They can actually communicate their results um, and work with teams to help do this. So in C4's Global Comparative Study on Red, I'm working in the part mostly in Peru and Bolivia. In, we collected um, data in 170 villages with over 4,000 families in, in the six countries where we're working. And in Latin America alone, between 2010 and 2011, we hired 80, uh, 80 young researchers um, for eight sites in the Amazon. And those were undergraduate students, those were graduate students, both masters and PhDs from Brazil and, and Peru. And they not only collected all of the data on livelihoods and land use so that we can follow this over time and understand the impacts of climate change mitigation activities, but then one year after they collected that data, we went back to all of the places where, where we had collected the first phase data and we shared the results with, with the communities and with our partners and with the people who are actually implementing the, the climate change mitigation activities. And this is a simple step, actually. I mean, many researchers go back to where they collected the data and they share the results. Um, and here are some, some photos of doing that through community meetings, through, um, through graphs, through games, through reports, through actually somebody created a theatrical production of, of, of what the results looked like and engaged communi community members in the actual theater um, production as actors. You know, and, and what blew me away is that I was sort of imagining a kind of conventional approach to this. Okay, we have our research results, we go to the communities, we present them, and actually these, these young students totally innovated on that. I mean, the theater production, this was, you know, this came out of nowhere, the art, the games, and it just reinforced to me that this is it. I mean, this is, this is how science can become interesting, actually. And, and, and the thing, too, is that, you know, the thing that actually, bothers me and it's bothered me for years and it still bothers me is when you go to these communities and they've had tons of research groups come in and you know that and they say to you you guys are the first group that's come back with the information you know I mean that's just it's not okay and um, and it's uh, it, it just shows the importance of this as, as sort of our first responsibility actually and this is just really basic information sharing this is not this is not a big deal. It takes some budget, it takes a bit of funds, it takes some time, it takes some creativity, but this is, I think, our basic. This is the, what we have to do, and then we can build up from there. And um, maybe we could see the, the next slide, Michelle. Um, this, is, this is something that actually I developed with a bunch of 
other forestry graduate students when I was finishing my PhD. And um, it was a, a group of us who were actually thinking about this then and thinking of really how within our sort of confined academic environment as researchers, we could share knowledge in, in different ways. And, and what I showed, you know, just this at the basis of the pyramid is sort of the easiest things that you can do. So in our diagram, I mean, we were, we were graduate students at the time, so we were this sort of black circle, the graduate student researcher, but this can be any researcher, young, old, any. And then the local stakeholders were in the white circles, and that was, you know, that's, this can be communities, this can be practitioners, this can be policymakers. I mean, it's really where you're working, you can think of this. And we, so the, what I showed with the, you know, going back to communities and returning results, that's simple information sharing. And that's the easiest thing to do. And that's the, it's sometimes it's one way, actually. Sometimes it's presentations, but there's always the learning that comes back. Um, when you show some of the graphs that came out from that particular site, and they say, well, that doesn't make sense, or why would it be that way? And then you start questioning the analyses, and it actually, it becomes actually a very two-way process. And then skill building, and Stephen gave the perfect example of skill building. I mean, thank you for that mapping example, because you as a student saw this demand, you went back to your university, you found how you could actually contribute, and I think, you know, that's taking this a step farther. And that's actually bringing, you know, um, responding to a demand as a, as a researcher. And then the highest level, um, which is actually the hardest for, for students, I'd say, um, and young researchers to, to get involved in, but, but really the place where the most innovation is happening is this knowledge generation together. And so that's when the researcher is actually making, formulating the research questions with either the communities or the practitioners or the policymakers, together creating the research questions, together implementing the research, together analyzing the results, and together then disseminating the results. I mean, that's really, and I know, I'm sure you all actually know of examples. What I've seen, at least, is that young researchers are the ones who can break out of the boxes that we that we define. I mean, how much I learn from the younger students on our teams, and keep learning and, and, and keep changing how we think about this. So if you're in the audience and you're faculty and or part of academic programs, encourage your students to do this kind of knowledge exchange in their research. Um, validate it. Plug them into your networks. Um, if you ha can, actually create skills courses for it. I was part of a, you know, I happened at my, in my PhD program, I happened to take a course on conflict and collaboration management. And this is something that I go back to all the time, actually, in my work that, as a forester, I would have never taken, actually. And so if there's even opportunities for facilitation skills courses or conflict management courses or kinds of courses that can help people in knowledge exchange, um, you know, help with that. If your practitioners welcome students and young researchers into your work, develop, be willing to develop research with them, be willing to learn from, from students, um, and help them be better professionals um, by, by working with you. If your donors support the, the research where you see this clearly articulated, or maybe not this, but something that's actually showing real and genuine knowledge exchange. Um, and if your students and, and young researchers, I think, recognize the very unique moment that you're in right now in your career, because while there's a diversity of situations and people are under very different constraints and, and things like that, I guess generally it's, you're less encumbered by a lot of the other things that come later. Um, and you're not, and I want to be careful about saying this, but, but um, the, some of the, the conventional academic metrics are less placed on you at that, at that stage of your career. So maybe you ha you're more open um, to, to be able to really engage in this and actually innovate it and teach, teach all of us about how to do, this, to do this better. So thank you very much. And, and I guess the last thing is, while you're here, if for the people who are here, take advantage of talking with the practitioners, with the policymakers, with the, you know, if your students figure out, make those connections now, I mean, Come work with us at C4. Come work with the other organizations. I mean, um, this is a very nice opportunity to get out of your academic setting and, and, and make those kinds of connections that, that will help you be better professionals. So thank you. Mm -mm.